and his son. And, you know, we've got a couple of uh, exhibits that have been sealed now, but the witness on the stand from SLED has been describing them, talking about uh, visual hair and brain matter. Uh, seems we had a number of exhibits earlier that were not sealed. These have been. She's discussing them now. Let's go back live. Something in the gravel that y'all inspected? Uh, yes, the at marker 13 that the sheriff's office had placed, uh, there was a, a disturbance in the, the gravel um, area that we, we dug into that area. Um, we presumed it was a bullet strike where a bullet had hit, um, so we dug into that area. And did you find anything when you were looking? Yes, we found several um, metal fragments. What did you just remove from um, baggy from the crime lab? These are the metal fragments that I collected from in the ground at marker 13. And how do you know those are the metal fragments you collected? Uh, they, they look familiar. Uh, it's my handwriting on the envelope, uh, date, time, and initials when I collected it, and my initials on the seal. Okay, so now we know that uh, this is one of the the uh, bullets, the blackouts that didn't hit anything. Seems to have fragmented on the uh, the ground. I think it's called controlled fracturing. That's that's a specific of that particular bullet. Uh, Richard Schoenstein is here. Catherine Lizardo, good to have you guys along here. Uh, you know this ballistic stuff, uh, Catherine. You know it's so important, and and for the true CSI geeks, they're loving it. Uh, but, you know, it kind of makes us want uh, maybe a little bit more. What's your take on this? Well, for now, it's very tedious what they're doing, which is uh, proving the chain of custody or establishing that to make sure who actually collected that, which we're seeing here, the testimony of the witness confirming that she did collect those bullets and metal fragments, just so we can establish that the evidence was not contaminated. For now, it is tedious, but we do want more uh, as a CSI lover myself, uh, <laughs> I want to know about, you know, are there any fingerprints on there and who else handled that bullet, if they could find out. You know, Rich, I do think it was interesting, the finding of the bullet casings or the shell casings under Maggie's body, because I, that tells us a lot about where the shooter was when at least two of those shots were fired. That is interesting, Michael, and you can kind of spin that either way, either because it's a much more personal killing if the murder happened up close like that and you can say maybe that would be more unlikely that Alec Murdoch would do that. But my big takeaway here from what I'm seeing today and yesterday is this is a hard case for the prosecution. You know, their motive theory doesn't is doesn't blow me away. Uh, they don't have the best evidence in the world, and the evidence they do have has issues. There may be issues about the collection of evidence in the crime scene. There may be evidence about the chain of custody, and I'm sure there's going to be evidence about the uh, questions about the testing of that evidence. It's going to be a hard road for the prosecution. Let's talk about that motive issue, Catherine, because, you know, the theory is, hey, uh, you know, the defendant was about to be found out about all these legal shenanigans he was pulling. 
But it's not a typical murder motive where maybe there's a big insurance policy uh, or, or there's some other reason. Maybe somebody's going to rat somebody out, even though it, it looked like maybe they could have helped those making fraud claims against Alec Murdoch. Um, but, but the motive just, just, just doesn't really seem that, uh, that good. At first blush, it seems like it's out of proportion because, like you mentioned, the motive allegedly is that he wanted to steer away the attention from his fraud cases to uh, to this type of murder. So basically distract people from what he committed. At first blush, it seems like it is far-fetched, but then when you start realizing how many uh, charges are against him and his family, yeah, you know, it's, it's obviously it's developing. It's developing. Hey, let me uh, thank and excuse Rich Hodstein. Thank you so much, sir. Good to see you, Catherine Lazardo. As always, a pleasure. That's going to do it for me, Michael Bryant. I didn't get to my chart, so come over to my house. We'll look at them this weekend. I'll do them next week. Try to do the right thing. Michelle, you coming up next.